Silver Surfer as a stack history, so we got a lot to unpack here. I've been thinking about doing a video like this for a while now where I kind of wanted to do, you know, something where I break down a character's history in a video. So I've been kind of kicking this idea around. So let me know down in the comments if something you want to see more of, what I should or shouldn't be doing in the videos and stuff like that. But basically, we're going to break down the history of a character and all of his appearances and important issues. So let's start off with the service of his first ever appearance. Norn Rad and Galactus first appear in Fast Forward number 48. It's one of the most iconic books of this era. Everybody knows Galactus shows up to consume Earth with his Herald Silver Surfer who has second thoughts and aids in the fight against his master. Reed Richards bargains with Galactus on a bluff, considering he was given this gadget known as the Ultimate Nullifier, which can destroy everything, it seems. Uh, but Galactus bites, and he ends up leaving on, on kind of almost under an honor code more than under fear. This arc runs through FF 48, 49, and then 50, where Alicia, Ben Grimm's girl, convinces Silver Server to turn back on his master, and uh, it's an amazing read. It's honestly one of my favorite arcs of all time, and it's Probably some of the best Lee and Kirby duo books there is out there. We also meet Wine Wingfoot in this arc, which is kind of cool. And then, uh, you know, phase four, number 51, Ben Grimm thinks the Surf Surfer won over his girl. He's kind of in his feels, which eventually leads into the introduction of the Negative Zone. And which, again, that's a ma massive part of Marvel history, but not too, too big for Surf Surfer. In issue 55, however, uh, Ben finds Alicia with the Surfer and misinterprets what's going on. And basically, um, he takes off on the Cosmic Hero. And it's an iconic issue. It's another great cover. a lot of great server covers in this era. And it's first time Silver Surfer isn't completely naked, which is a nice addition. Uh, but Silver Surfer shows up in some more keys, but nothing really important until FF57, where Doom begins his plot to steal the powers of the Silver Surfer, uh, or the, the, the Cosmic Powers, or however it's, it's referred to. By the next issue, he has those powers, and he takes on Marvel's greatest family. This continues all the way through issue 60 and ropes in humans into it. Uh, but eventually, this, uh, this, you know, iconic arc would end with uh, Doom's defeat and service of his term his powers. Uh, Tales of Stodge number 93 is where the Surfer ventures out of the FF for the first time. And it's sort of a precursor to the Defenders, where, um, you know, you, you get him and, uh, and, and the Hulk battle for the first time. It's a great cover, and it, it's definitely another one of those best, one of the best covers of this era yet again. Uh, Fist War number five is Surfer's first solo story, where he has this weird event revolving around Quasimodo. It's also Psycho Man's first, and uh, Kirby and Lee explain how to develop a plot for the kids in the book, which is kind of cool. Uh, Surfer relapses into a villain role in FF72, uh, where he thinks humanity needs to come together and takes drastic measures. But after the fantastic family saves him, uh, the surfer will save surfer from um, the American government. He realizes he messed up. He just kind of leaves at the end of the issue. It's a little, little abrupt. But uh, it's another great cover yet again. Galactus tries to get his herald to aid him yet again. And uh, the server needs FF's help to uh, ba basically keep Galactus at bay. Uh, a few issues starting off with 74. Several of my favorite covers yet again. Uh, I'll probably say that a lot in this, this part of the video. Surfer tries to hide a Subatonica, which I believe first appears in this arc. Uh, that doesn't work out so well. So he ends up being trapped at Galactus' side, where we get issue 77. Surfer manages to break off again so he can do a solo series. Uh, Surfer 7 number 1 is the first solo and ongoing title for the Surfer. Um, Again, there's origin, the origin of the Watcher, and uh, Surfer, of course, becomes the Herald and uh, saves Zen La from Tenable Fate, which is his homeworld, um, where, you know, obviously Galactus was going to eat it and that whole shebang. We also meet Shala Bell for the first time, or Shala, yeah, Shala Bell, who um, he had to leave behind on uh, Zen La's Surfer's love interest. And it's also the first time Surfer utters the iconic lines, where soars the Surfer Surfer, he must soar alone. Or there must he soar alone. It's one of those iconic Stanley-isms that I believe was actually just written out to fill space. I believe it's one of those... Uh, Lee was famous for that. Where he, Kirby would leave him too much space. He would just fill it in with nonsense, really. But uh, I believe that was uh, one of the iconic lines that came out of that. Surfer series rages on with several key issues. Uh, issue 2, which is to the, the Badoon. Uh, the Surfer is still trapped in orbit on Earth uh, via Galactus. And uh, issue 3, where we meet Mephisto for the first time. Who actually brings Shalabal to Earth to torture the Surfer. After he takes all Mephisto and his demons, he wins the battle. And Mephisto sends Shalabal back to Zen Law in a way to win his war. 
basically. Uh, issue four is another super iconic book where Loki finds the surfer, convinces him that Thor is evil, and he can figure out how to, you know, he did figure out, he gets tricked by Loki, and he uh, goes, fights Thor on the Rainbow Bridge. It's never really explained, I don't remember offhand at least, how Loki gets him out of orbit. He chooses, like, Loki powers, and he brings, or he gets, like, Zap there, he's the, the Rainbow Bridge and all that. But eventually, Surfer figures it out, and Loki t puts it back on Earth, and he's stuck there yet again. Uh, issues following basically are, you know, the Surfer tries a new thing to break out of the barrier, gets roped back into uh, fighting someone, and he gets sent back to Earth for it. Uh, you know, whether it's the stranger in issue five or in issue six, when he does some time traveling and eventually Surfer just is stuck doing adventures on Earth. Uh, honestly, every issue of this run is a great read. There's just amazing comic fun. The interior art's great. The covers are great. The stories are fun. It's just a great run altogether. And it's not too long. Mephisto shows up in a couple more times and there's a lot of great villain team ups and, and new villain appearances and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, some standard issues are, of course, number 14 where Spider-Man crosses over. Uh, we change over to the Bronze Age, and then we get number 16, which is an iconic Mephisto cover, and 18 is the last issue, uh, and Surfer takes on the Inhumans. We jump into Submariner number 35, where Hulk and Namor, uh, Hulk, Namor, and Silver Surfer all team up and take on the Avengers, which is another pre uh, precursor to the Defenders coming together. Uh, the trio also fought each other in the issue prior. Galactus is brought back yet again, and the uh, Surfer and the FF have to team up to take him down and fans for 122 and 123. You know, just, it's, it had been a while at that point since Surfer Surfer and Galactus showed up in, in, in a uh, Phase 4 book, so it was just time for another arc. Nothing too major. Defenders number 2, the Surfer joins the Marvel's newest team, the Defenders, uh, which is a big part of Rad's history. I also kind of think it's weird that it took them this long, you know, four or five appearances of the Defenders before Surfer would join the team and they'd put him into the roster uh, because it would seem all the precursor books that would sort of set up the Defenders at a certain point had Surfer really in them. Uh, but this eventually lead into the Avengers Defenders War where the two teams would fight over eight issues between the two titles. Uh, and a rare issue you never see really ever is the uh, the Comic Art Convention program from 1975. It was a giveaway, uh, and again, with an amazing Kirby Silver Surfer cover. It's just another book that's kind of worth mentioning. Nothing too crazy. Uh, another odd issue is the uh, the Trade Silver Surfer, uh, The Ultimate Cosmic Experience. It's the first ever Marvel graphic novel, which is an interesting piece of history. It's also a non-canon story made to pitch a film that never came out. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a tough book to find. I found mine at a dollar bin years ago. And it is also uh, the last collaboration between Stanley and Jack Kirby. So that's really a piece of Marvel history and a piece of comic history. And it's definitely something that should be on a list like this worth talking about. Um, on out of, Another out of continuity story would be published in Epic Illustrator number one. Uh, later the run would have the iconic Last Galactus story, which was published in 26 and 27 of the same run. But it was supposed to go on nine issues, and it was sadly canceled before it could finish out. From here, we move out into the Copper Age. Uh, from here, the server has a lot less major appearances and major issues. Uh, the next ongoing run starts in 1987 and runs 146 issues. Bobby draws the surfer. You know, surfer's dark half becomes a thing, sort of. And, uh, you know, Zen Law is stripped by Galactus. It's no longer the Utopia. Norrin Rad remembers, and his people blame him for it. The Kree Scroll War lands Shalabal as the leader of the home world. And the surfer ends up trying to defeat, ends up defeating his home world to save Earth, which kind of leaves him as a man of no world, sort of like the opposite of, um, uh, Adam Strange. But he crosses over with Green Lantern and he has several co cosmic events that kind of rope him into it. Overall, that's the Silver Surfer keys for the most part, you know? You, we go into the, the modern era, and, you know, in 2018, Donny Cates had, uh, done Silver Surfer Black, and that was an amazing six-issue mini, uh, arguably the best thing Donny Cates did in comics, uh, to date. Uh, you know, he set up the Fallen One, and that Dennis Wynn storyline was another great Cates story, uh, which uh, led into Silver Surfer Black and, uh, brought Nolan to the fold. But really, honestly, that is the Silver Surfer history for the most part here. Uh, let me know if I missed anything, if there's any issues I should talk about, or should be included on the list, let me know down in the comments below. And also let me know what characters do you want to see me do next. I was thinking about maybe doing this as a monthly series, or just kind of as I, as I feel the need to throw it out. Uh, so I wanted DC characters, Marvel characters, indie, maybe work on uh, some videos about, you know, writers, artists, stuff like that, maybe even uh, directors and kind of in the similar format as this. Uh, so let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this kind of video. If you enjoyed, follow me here on Facebook and Instagram for more daily content. I'm posting multiple pieces of content every single day uh, across the three platforms. And uh, uh, down in the description, we also have the... Uh, 
link for Phantoms Unleashed, which is a great Facebook group I run. Uh, it's basically behind the scenes. Look at Connor's comics. Great uh, daily discussions and all kinds of great stuff. There's polls for the next videos going up. And all kinds of other stuff you go down in the description. is all linked down there. Go check it out. And hope you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.